Welcome to the State of the Union for 11 15 2020. Wow, this year's just going by, man. Flying by. So we started this. Time is a thief. We started this, I think it was in April. No, we started thinking about it in April. I was looking at the stats the other day oh, on Anchor. If you haven't been to our Anchor page, go to our Anchor page. Um, we started June 3rd. Yeah. yeah. We started June 3rd was our first podcast with David Shaw. Oh, it was June 3rd? Yeah, it was June 3rd. Because you and I had planned it when the lockdown had happened, which was March 14th in California. I was like, okay. don't know what I'm going to fucking do. So I just, you know, you and I started planning a bunch of stuff. And I said, let's give it eight weeks and let's really plan it. Let's put some guests together and, you mm-hmm. know, me plan, plan, plan. So good. Somebody's got to be like that. Yeah, right. I guess it's me. Um, so, so we ended up, you know, starting the first one. And thanks to all you awesome viewers, as of yesterday at 9 a.m., uh, we hit the thousand mark of a thousand streams. So cool. it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, got some stuff coming up. We'll talk about at the end of the show in the next few weeks with the best of episode and some guests that we have coming on this week and stuff yep. like that. So um, last been week, good. Last been week, good. Red Star. So uh, that was premiered on Friday. On Friday, Red Star boys uh, from all over the place: Mikey Lopez, Russ Rag, Damian. Um, yeah, Damian's last name. I fucking. I want to say it's like like, Damian Drake or yeah, something like that. Damian Drake. Or something vampire-y. Yeah, he looks kind of vampire. Like a rapper vampire. Yeah, that kid could bring it though. I gave. I, I, oh no, he's got serious flow. If if you haven't heard their story, it's pretty pretty awesome. It's guys from several different bands that kind of broke up. Yep. And I didn't kind of. They did break up yeah, and kind of came together to form this band, Red Star. And yep. Russ and I, the drummer, who's not in the interview, unfortunately, which he wish he was, but he's been on our show before uh, for State of the Union, is probably one of the best like studio session drummers you'll ever meet and he literally is just always driven he's one of those guys who's actually done it done it from being in bands like old-fashioned beatdown to being in a band called vices is where he comes from before red star Fashion. um yeah, that's oh dude i still have the shirt somewhere yeah. on the back of the shirt it was on the front of it was ofbd yeah on the front of the shirt and on the back of it was a middle finger yeah. that said from me to you <laughs> that's cool that's, uh, I have respect for that you know so that's what's up so yeah wow. they, they had a good they had a great story of just um, just hashing it out and finding you know the right people to be in a band with and just they didn't care whether it worked or not from anything that they've done before and it didn't dissuade them in any kind of way emotionally they were always going to be doing it no matter what and they just, you know, they're releasing their first song, Shut the Fuck Up, right? That's what it's called? Yeah, STFU, let's just say, is the, the working title. It's, it's but, pretty- um, but I talked to Mikey Lopez the other day, just, you know, about the episode and how it was coming out, but also um, the fact that, you know, they are going back in the studio with Sahaj Tikkan and, uh, and, and Sahaj, just, what bands has he done? Come on, you know. So uh, he worked with Motley Crue on the Dirt song. That's oh, one of them. Yeah. Um, he's worked with uh, Nine Electric. I think he's done some work with Bad Wolves. Um, but he's worked with a lot of bands. But himself, as a songwriter, singer, was the lead singer of Raw. Oh, uh, right. Okay, now that makes sense. Yeah, right. with PJ Farley from Trickster. And I don't know what band Ben was from, but there's a bunch of guys who've been so in that band. You said Trickster because I was uh, just going to say, what about Trickster? What happened to them? <laughs> That's oh, I know. I, dude, you know what the funny story is? And if PJ's listening, I'm going to tell this right now. So years and years ago, you remember Scott DiCarlo, the, the cop from Rutherford, who um, had the little room next door to Scott Norton's, right? I do. Yeah. Wow. So, so Norton introduced or not Norton Scott uh, DiCarlo introduced me to PJ from Trickster, and I love Trickster. I saw them open for like the Scorpions and stuff like that. Yeah, dude. In high school, and um, PJ was wanted to learn how to use Pro Tools, and Scott had bought it. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, I taught PJ Farley how to use Pro Tools like way back in the day. Uh huh. So it's always funny we used to chat about trickster stories because they're you know tricksters from Paramus. So yeah, 
That I know because I worked with but, the but but outside of Trickster being who Trickster is, um PJ's an amazing musician, and so is Steve Brown, the guitar player from Trickster. Yeah. Um Steve Brown played for Def Leppard for a little while. Oh yeah? Yeah, like legit. He's in that league of like Vivian Campbell, Phil Colin, always who, has been. Who did he replace in uh Uh it's I think he filled in when Vivian Campbell was sick with cancer. Uh, Steve stepped in and and took over some of the touring duties. Was Vivian the bass player? No. Vivian Campbell was the guitar player for Dio and Whitesnake. Okay. And is is a permanent member of Def Leppard at this point. Okay. Who did he replace in Def Leppard? Uh, Steve Clark, who passed away. That's right. Steve Mm -hmm. Clark. Death Leopard's fucking great. Um, what a band. Amazing harmonies. What a band. I, so outside of that, outside of that. We're, we're here at the State of the Union, and we're here going to talk about articles and, and stuff and give you value instead yeah. of me and him jabbering away. So here's the deal. Yeah, but everybody likes... We're going to tailor this to that so that people... Yeah, we are going to tailor it to that. So here you're seeing. Here's what's going to happen. See, yeah. when we go back, when we go back to not having to be in our goddamn houses... So I, don't know, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I think it's probably the closest way we're going to get back to um, normalcy. Normalcy with shows is Ticketmaster is laid down the law and said that when we do go back to having shows, we are selling tickets again at the regular rate, which by the way, I saw 311 last night in Ventura County at the mm-hmm. fairgrounds for the drive-in show. I went to my first I, one last you, night. I didn't yeah. know that. It was random. Last, last minute, a friend invited me, and I'm I was like, you. "Okay, I'll go." How was that? It was it was awesome. It's so funny. It's like the hive where they practice is literally right down the street from my house. So I was driving. I drive by it like every morning on my way to coffee. Mm-hmm. Do you drive by it like this? Like, like if you guys are out there and you're not, watching. I just crank up down and you know, no, I don't do that. Yes, yeah, you drive but, by. <laughs> no, I don't do that, but. We went up up there last night to Ventura, the the fairgrounds to go see them. I mean, we didn't have great seats, which is you know the funny part of it. There were different circles Parks. and sections that you could pay for more premium. I mean, tickets were like ninety nine to two hundred and ninety nine dollars. And where'd you get? How close did you get? We were like in the red section, so we were like four rows out. And you can get out of your car and sit on it or something. We did. Um, wasn't advised. I wore a mask though. I'll tell you that much. Okay, because people around here, that's the, what they're doing too, and they're supposedly yeah. sitting on their cars or something. My friend had a truck, so we were just standing on the back. Well, that's the bed. That's fucking ideal. But they they sounded amazing, as they, they always do, because they are just that type of band. And, you know, I think there's something to be said about it. I, I love California. Mm-hmm. I like people in general, I think. Yeah. But we're inherently good. <laughs> but, but, but the problem is, is that everybody in their own right, it's nobody's fault. It's kind of super selfish when it comes to shit like this. How do you mean? And, and because the thing is, is like, you know, you're not going to tell me what to do. Everyone has a problem with authority to a certain extent. Of course. Especially when you've paid for something, if you feel entitled that you are going to yeah. be allowed to do whatever you fucking want. Or do what you enjoy yourself and have a good damn good time and not be told not to. And yeah, think, of course. You know. Here's the problem with concert tickets. They Why? don't allow you to fucking do that. Yeah. They're a contract to let you into the show. You don't own the fucking seat in that building. You don't uh, have rights to that seat in that building and they can eject you at any point. Okay. So, so, so if you look at the fine print on the back of a concert ticket, it's very fine for a reason, because if you really read it, it would scare the shit out of you in some instances. What, well, just like the legal, just like the the health hazards of your phone when you go on there. Yeah, your health hazards. Your phone is on there, and also if you get shot by a gun, they're not liable. Like, but we've all seen that. No, I'm just saying it's, it's an analogy. Is it's like yeah. you have your phone, you think it's awesome, but if you just read the ramifications of oh yeah, one hundred percent, you it's scary. So it's something. Yeah. Like, gotcha. Um. Well, at least you had a good time. Three Eleven, yeah. getting you in the one box. of my favorite bands. Fuck yeah, hell yeah, rightfully so. Yeah, so I mean, it was fun, and you know, it was good to hear music all night, and 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 Nick and the boys always always tear it up, in my opinion. Um, but you know, I think that at the end of the day, 
Ticketmaster is going in the right direction. Yeah. There's a tornado warning. We have a tornado warning. Oh, in New Jersey? Yeah. Well, well I, I know there's a joke in there, but I can't find it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's rare, but it has happened. Um, oh, no, definitely. It has happened. happened in a lot of different places. Um, Wait, it just pop up on your phone? Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, um, ah. that's the other thing. They're not responsible if a tornado blows you away at a concert. So good point, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love that's- how you did that, buddy. Way to dovetail. Way to dovetail. Um, but, you know, you look at it, and I think it's, you know, going back to the inherent- inherently selfish part of people at shows. Yeah. You know, look, if you don't want to get a vaccine, great. Show up with a negative test. Those are your two to- choices. Mm-hmm. I think that's one socially responsible of Ticketmaster to do. Yeah. Starters. Yeah. They're well, actually creating a safe space for you to go to a concert and not feel that you're going to get sick. You know what I always liked? I always liked this too. And this, this, you know, we're talking about State of the Union, but we could talk about live music and our live concert experiences versus not having them anymore. <laughs> but right. like this one was always awesome. Like you go to a tool show and they have something strictly, no cell phones, which kind of sucks because you want to capture some cool stuff, but mm-hmm. they let you take them out for some stuff and they'll allow you and say it on stage as they go. But the signs say no moshing. And that was one of my favorite, you know, signs that I've ever seen. And I've been to a concert because I always like want to watch and get close as I can without getting into the pit. And I don't mind people moshing, but some people just go to shows to fuck. I think that there's some people who just are there to fuck shit up. That's what I'm saying. There's yeah. people like that. It's like their excuse. It's like Dexter, you know, you know, he kills serial killers, you know, you know, people go to fucking concerts to fight, you know, they want to get yeah. a fight, you know, a little, little different extremity I here. I but- remember like there were certain shows in New York, especially when Pantera would play like Roseland ballroom. Yeah. But you know, you're talking Pantera. So there's definitely, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the crowd's a little, little rough. Go to a hate breeder, is- concrete show. Same oh thing. yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, but that's expected. But sure. you would go to Pantera shows. And I remember one time watching this kid just standing there. Yeah. And this dickhead, go this ahead. dickhead stage dove, like head feet first. Yeah. Kicked him in the face. Kicked the kid in the face. It looked like he got, looked like he got basically fucking shot by a shotgun. In oh, the face. Got His nose was so broken. Oh. But like, it's shit like that, dude. Like, you don't need to do that, asshole. Yeah. But people do. And, yeah. You know, you got the concert, the venues need to make sure that they're not liable for shit like that. Well, of course. Because, you know, they would click close down. Like my brother has a hatchet throwing place. You know what the liability insurance must be on that place? I don't Your really. Your brother has a hat. You never told me this. Your brother yeah. has a hatchet throwing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But that's been open for about two years and that's a non essential business. It's, but, you know, they're still doing okay, thank God. But uh, regardless, it's like that. It's like go to a hatchet throwing place and then. You know, one idiot, that one idiot. Hopefully you never do, but do you you hear me? It's fucking throwing up people. Yeah, But you hear me? Are they, are they cutting prices in half because of COVID? (laughs) That's funny. Yeah. They're actually doing that. Boom. So let's talk about these two articles that are articles. And then the little, the thing that we're going to, at the end, we want to talk about something that's going to be a value. Yeah. So there's this company in Israel. Yeah. that has made a press release available where you can um we're on the verge of not having headphones anymore kids so we have earbuds right and now we it's have earbuds but but we're talking about now more radiation into your head yeah like total elon musk mind control device like a ultra shit that's already yeah, if this was an mk ultra who, who, who would have knew so um so, I mean, basically, this is an Israeli company that built this, but they're stating that they're able to create a 3D surround experience through speakers that basically be- feels like it's basically so close, it's actual headphones. So they're 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 creating yeah. that is fucking nuts. They're ch- t- tapping into the electromagnetic nets of your, you know. I guess. I mean, there's no, I don't think Electric there's any other way to explain it. Or I mean, like everything's electromagnetics anyway. So you're. So they're tapping into that somehow with something like kind of like Wi-Fi, maybe. I don't know, but this is interesting for no sure. No chip needed. No chip needed. So that's good. So it says. Right. Um chip, will you stop it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so beam sound in your head. The company's called 
funnily enough, the company is called Sound Beamer 1.0. Let's look out for that. Developed Great. the first developed by the Israeli company Nevado Systems, Sound Beamer 1.0 is a device that sound directly to the user's ears through 3D sensing technology. Okay. The audio pocket created around the ears allows the user to hear sounds in their head. Great. The two big takeaways here is the other is in the immediate surroundings will not be able to hear any of the audio currently being beamed. The user will also be able to clearly hear their own surroundings. Huh. That's weird. The other, the other person, I could be hearing this right now, and then you wouldn't even be hearing it, what I'm hearing if we we're in the same room. Bingo. Kind of like a paranormal experience. But, but you could hear me clearly talk to you, essentially. This is fucking weird, man. This is this is this on Lawwire. It spills over into so many different things that have already. Yeah. Like, I'm not going into it, but you know, MK Ultra, like people have hearing voices in their head, and nobody else can hear those voices but you. And you don't know what's okay, going on. Okay, okay, buddy. No, see, dude, you want to? <laughs> I swear, you you serious? MK Ultra, look it up. It's fucking oh. been around since World War II, 1939. I know a lot of history that nobody ever talks about. It's very interesting, but that technology has been around for a long time. Now they're bringing it to market, and this is interesting to me. Mm. Oh, now we can actually sell it. Let's see what happens. I mean, it sounds yeah. pretty fucking cool. I think your ears off. Your your ears are off. Your ears off because this is the this is the one version. I think you have to make sure that people aren't having like, you know, um, like side effects. Girl, yeah, like my girlfriend has. Um, uh, what do you call it? It's um, vertigo, but in Portuguese they call it labyrinth. Um, but vertigo, vertigo attacks where she gets knocked out by it. What's up? You remind me of the babe. What babe? Babe of the power. Babe of the power. Um, yeah, she gets like knocked out by it. It's like done once it happens. Okay, so yeah, it affects people in other different ways. Yeah, yeah, I think you would have to worry about that type of stuff, like inner ear, equilibrium stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. My mom just had her ears cleaned because her equilibrium was off. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to this. Very cool. Technology. Uh, I want to just, you know, kind of graze over the the next uh, thing we're talking about. Yeah, watch move to Westchester County. Cool. Um, what's so, that? What's the second one you had? Didn't you have another one? No, those were the two. Ticketmaster and that. Okay, Ticketmaster. Cool, because we're, we're we're good. We're making time here. So the, the let's talk about this to to the bands out there and right now and uh, what you guys are doing again. I'm going to co- say this every single time, but in a different way. Um, to be basically in front of everything that's going on so you can be taken seriously more um, and have momentum going into 2021, right? Yeah, brother. And, um, I always listen to Damien Keyes and I, I listen to his articles and he's really good up on what's trending uh, in, you know, where we talk about a lot of the same things, but the thing is, this is what this podcast is about and it's never, ever, it's never ending. It's, it's always, there's more things that you can add to make this more valuable. But, um, Basically, right now, he's saying that, you know, you're not going to be able to get out there for this long. So you should just start again, recording your music, like, and batching it out, taking pieces of that music and showing that to build up for the the releases. Kind of like we're talking about with some of the artists that we're working with and what, you know, what they're doing with their business and with their music. And the only thing you can really do is just stay persistent in the writing and recording process, which you already do. And you're just going to get better at it. And they start talking about like what we're doing, like Mike, you know, we got premiere a couple months ago and you started using it and now you're getting pretty damn good at it. And I use the mobile version and I'm getting pretty damn good at it with the mobile version, but together we make a good team. We we, we're learning things on our own that are uh, making it easier to just, take initiative and get things done. It's also very interesting because then you become like, what are the things that you should be putting the most time in that aren't wasting your time? Like an 80, 20 rule, you know, the 80, 20 rule. Yeah, I know the 80, 20 rule. I agree with you on this. And you know, it's funny. I was having this exact conversation today Yeah. with one of our artists that we're, we were possibly going to work with. Yes. And I said, look, I said, we have four or five songs. We're going to kind of follow the rest of the rapper model where we're putting the music out one song in a month. And, yeah, he does. You know, the, the thing is, is that um, the thing is, is that you, you have to plan though for that. Sure. 
It doesn't, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. And I'm not seeing all curation services, but most of the curation playlist curation services that we've seen mm. up front to date, Greg and I, is it's like it's a six week roll up, maybe eight. Yeah. You got to put the amount of time before so, you use something as well. And, then, and this is the one thing I will say to every one of our viewers if you are in that independent realm, which you probably are. Which you probably are. You have to plan at least ninety days in advance if you're gonna if you're gonna launch a single. Don't just throw your fucking song out there. Yeah, please, God, don't do it. Just throw your don't song. do Listen, it. You like have roll to. it up. Like 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 even if you only get five downloads, like make sure those five people feel really freaking special on your Instagram. Yeah, because a hundred people that like your song is better than no people liking your song, and a hundred people. Yeah. At ten bucks a pop, that's pretty decent money. You could probably make from a hundred people. Now you're not looking to make money; you're looking to give them a reason to give that to want to support what you do. So you know that adds up fast, guys. And yep. if you're putting, if you're putting, like we'll talk about what are the what are the one thing? What's the one thing you could be doing right now? I talk about right now video editing, like doing capturing your your content mm -hmm. around the song that you're doing in the process. Like you have the real life, right? You're there at practice. You're practicing. Take a couple shots of something cool. Put one story up, put a couple stories up, and then you have something else for later. And then you can li literally repurpose that same story or a post in like three months. And that's that's yeah. more for you later. You don't post it the, the same thing all the time. But you, there's a there's a cycle for it, and but but I mean to touch on what we're doing, touch on that real quick. What we're doing with the artists that we are working with is you're talking like we're doing some marquee content where it's like get to know you, roll it up for the website, like yeah. all these really nice photos, nice videos, that kind of thing, and then we go on to like really training the artist to say, hey, you know you 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 know you need to every day put a few pieces of content up so people get to really know you because they want to know you on this more sure. cellular, cellular level than just listening to your music. And the thing is what most people don't understand, go, well, I'll just do playlists and blah, blah, blah. It's only going to last as long as you put money towards it. Well, here's the thing. And to, to speak and to if you don't. Yeah. And it, this is where you come into play. I mean, if you don't drive it, if you don't drive fans to other things, you're not going to be able to really catch that data on them. And here's the thing. Let me reverse engineer that. So here it is. You have the ability to take something that you're doing already, capture a couple pieces of it, put it out there and stay consistent every day. Hold yourself accountable to put at least one thing. You should be posting once to three times a day. Uh, and with that, and guys, this part of this is easy is you could just share the other companies that you use. So if you're using, again, the gear, I'm going to say this all the time. If you're using the gear, uh, I use Thomas, Ilgian, Symbols, Vic Firth Stick, Scorpion, Percussion. Um, you know, I'll be tagging those companies. Now, you might not get that traction. You might not see a lot of likes or, or, or anything right away, but it just... If you're not just posting consistently, the most important thing you could be doing is posting new stuff constantly. And it could be different songs in the same space. So if you have a rehearsal room, there's no reason you can't use that rehearsal space just to get the best pieces of content and not don't even get overwhelmed by it. Don't get a room. I want to stop you right there for one second. Look at our friends in Crash Karma. They record all their videos in their practice space. They're a perfect example, actually. Yeah. Good point. Thank you for stopping me. So, you know, we like to use examples of people who are on the show doing this because that's why they're on the show. And that's why we have the show. And it really validates and it makes me feel proud too, because, you know, when you find certain people that we've had on the, the show, like Crash Karma, they're doing their own videos. They have two GoPro cameras. They have a rehearsal room and they make really cool videos and they do some cool animation graphic things over it themselves. And that's the, what they're putting their time in. So I'm going to get back to what I was saying, which is important. Your time being spent on doing like 80% of the work with, with making 80% work for you is the time that you're spending actually creating what you're doing already. So you're just... 20% of it, yeah. You're just literally capturing what you're doing and you're just the, the the camera is literally like the fourth band member or the second band member or the person that's in the room with you and you just have a remote and you literally just you just press record 
And then you get capture a couple shots. Now I'm doing this more myself now, and especially since where my career is going, and I'm completely in charge now, and I have no fucking excuse. I know what to do, and now we're putting that forth. <laughs> and these these real these real examples will be. I mean, they already had like guys. If you need to get more likes on on Facebook, here's something you could do too. There's you can do a like campaign that will help you get more likes. Um, it's not paying for likes. You're actually targeting people that are all around the world at first. And this is taught to me by different, you know, uh, different uh, mentors that I follow. Um, it's literally that social credibility that when people do go to your page, they see that you actually do have some type of presence. And just because it's from, you know, a guy from uh, Ukraine or like India, it doesn't mean that that person is somebody that's like a, a, a wrong person that doesn't like that music. You say your band is in the, in the realm of so-and-so genre and you target people that like those bands and you will find the people that are into those type, that type of music. So you can get your likes up literally for like a hundred to $200 and have that. And you can maintain those likes and you can retarget those same audiences, right? With other cities that are more um, in the realm of where you want to play. Essentially, if you were playing like playing live, but it really doesn't matter right now. But it's still relevant in the fact that you can get very, very high up in social credibility. Like I have 3,400 likes on my page. I put like 50 bucks into it and I targeted it and I used that money really well. So just for little amounts of money that you would go out and buy coffee for the week, you can literally invest in yourself and start dragging, driving traffic to your page and start collecting that data that comes in and then taking that data and they give it to you for less money because you already optimized it and the Facebook wants to help you optimize it more and they give you like they give you another like audience that you could target for different cities that you're really targeting so for very little money you can get start increasing that social presence not only that we're talking about learning skills that are going to help you they're going to help you do what you're doing and they're going to make you into a complete business and and focused oriented um like you're optimizing the best point, uh, your best time. So if your time's best spent, where can it be best spent? I'm going to tell you where it's best spent. It's doing exactly what we're talking about. And if you could just do those things, you can have fiverr.com. You can, you could find people that can do like um, campaigns for you. Of course, they may not be good, but you can go out and find these different companies that will help you and give little investments. So it is worth investing in yourself. If you were to invest in anybody, who would it be? It should be yourself. Me, Let's, yeah, oh, right? I mean, you got to Fuck you, Greg. It's always about me. When you start putting it, there's a little fear though. There's a there's a little yeah, gatekeeper right right at the door. It goes, yo man, but you you need that money, man. You need to you need to you know you can you can get something else like something else that doesn't really matter. Well, I think we should use the example of us. I mean, literally, we reinvest every penny that's made into the combine back into the combine. Sure. So I mean, that's when you're building. We have other side hustles and stuff that we do to make this work. And this is the this isn't the day job. This is the career. So you know, there's the day job. Everybody has to make money somehow. Everybody has to make money and pay their bills. And then there's the career, which is, you know, this. Mm -hmm. And so there's other things that we're going to roll out over time that are really exciting that we're working on. It isn't just the podcast for us. It's more of a community thing for us. And it is. And it's, so I always like get, I like to get really granular uh, and I'm not going to get granular where the point it's overwhelming and we won't beat this over the head. Cause we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of other things to do with your night, but uh, this is the time to really, really start again, really putting yourself out there, getting out of your comfort zone. I'm going to say it again, just get out of your comfort zone. And if that means you just have to film something, just film something, have it, try it, get, get over yourself because nobody gives a shit about you unless you give a shit about yourself. And the truth True is, that. That, you know, like you just need to stop giving a shit with anybody else thinks and just do what you know needs to be done because in yeah, your head, yeah. you go, know, you go, okay, there's all these things I could be doing. Where do I start? Well, we're here to help you. And that's why I'm talking to you right now, because, you know, it's, it's sad to see so many good bands and so many good artists just sit around not doing anything. Um, and I'm starting to link up with more like-minded people like myself. And, and that's the most important. You're going to see people drop when you're doing the right thing and they don't want to get out of their comfort zone, whether it's your band, whether it's somebody around you, they're not going to want to be part of that because it's going to make, it's going to make them have to work. Like, you know, Mike and I do things during the day. We have all, everything we do, but we make sure we commit to this because it's important to us. It's, it's not, it's not just a game. Um, I mean, there is a game brother, but like, it's serious to us because we're really passionate about it. And um, I'm really happy to say, I think we're 24 episodes in this week coming up. Actually, yeah, it will be 20. It'll be our 
25th episode this Friday. Oh, this Friday. Okay. So yeah, the 25th, uh, who is this Friday? Tell us. Tell we about- have Jeffrey Udebor from Live Nation. And All right. Tyler Lazlery from Lazlery. Apple, Apple Music and Technologies. He's a lovely lad. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, so Jeff and, and Tyler are good friends of mine um, who Jeff worked all the different tour accounts uh, for um, Live Nation doing their VIP and um, yeah. experiences. And he's so been cool. on tour with like Childish Gambino. Uh, he's been on tour with um, Shit uh, Mana if for, for all of our Latin speaking friends. Um, and he's done a ton of tours. And like literally the new role he was going to go into this year, he literally wouldn't have been off the road until like now till November. And he talks about it in the actual interview. And then also Tyler uh, works in rolling out a lot of media concept and stuff for Apple TV plus uh, for Apple music, uh, doing special events for them. And it's a very interesting niche, um, niche, but also two guys from Boston who basically came out here almost the same time. have been friends for a long time Mm -hmm. and are a similar industry in industry. Got it. Yeah. And they really, it really shows how you are the company you keep. They're very together hustler type guys. And, they're and we, they've been hustling from yeah, the- they're, they're the real deal. And, you know, their interview is a little shorter than most, but the, the amount of wisdom they give in it is, is pretty, pretty special. So it is. I edited it yesterday. It sounds great. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. Uh, was there for it. So, you know, regardless, after your yeah. quote, well, but, yeah. right. So yeah, guys, if you're out there, please, uh, you, you know, anything that you're going through, we would love to hear from you and, um, you know, ask us questions that will help you answer. I mean, hopefully again, you take steps to, you know, actually bring the best out of yourself and follow what you, what you, what you're supposed to be doing and it and sure. what supposed to be doing is probably what you don't do enough of. So we, we all have that, you know, so do it, That's do it, get it done. Um, I just want to thank uh, some of our sponsors. Uh, Machine Shop Beats. Live. Um, want to thank Rock's Coffee. We actually want to send a good well wish to Jeff Buttermark, who is in the hospital with pneumonia at the moment. Oh, really? Rock Coffee, yeah. Uh, Pauline texted me the other day and uh, want to give Jeff a shout out. Jeff was really instrumental in getting Tom Maxwell on here. He, book, he works for FM Management out of the Midwest. Yeah. Yep. Uh, works with bands like Don Point and, and stuff like that. And so um just want to send him our well wishes and hope he so is on the men, the combine misses you, brother, and hope you're hope you're doing all right. All right. Yeah. And I was saying veeps too, because we're Oh yeah. Hey, Lindsay, Lindsay Medina and Veeps and the Madden brothers, thank you so much for, for what did they do for us? I don't they just I don't, they, they uh let us be a business partner. A business partner of theirs. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Well, we are proud to be a, be a business partner with Veeps and, and Veeps Incorporated. Now, they do amazing work. If you guys are trying to do yeah. a live stream, um, get in touch with us because we'll introduce you to the guys from Veeps. They're really yeah. amazing. And, you know, obviously we have to sift through yeah. which ones we can talk to. But um, we just did it with Machine and with Machine Shop Live. And The Well is going to be on uh, November 19th. And we'll post it on the Instagram this week. Sure. Um, yeah, that uh, the well is going to be doing a uh, paid live stream from the Machine Shop Live in Austin, Texas, or actually Dripping Springs is the town they're from. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's a, a local Austin band. They're doing it, doing it, and I got some things in the works that we're working on for uh, Machine Shop Live that might be pretty special, actually. So if we can get yeah. them all done, sounds like it. Sounds like it will be. You yeah, don't want to. Speak too soon, but it is in the works. Exactly. That's why I'm just hinting, hinting, yeah. towards it. Gotcha. throwing a hand grenade in its general direction to say, "Hey, be ready for the real hand grenade. Be ready for the real bomb." Um, all right, guys. It's always an amazing time to spend with you on this Sunday night, and great to hang out with y'all and keep yep. it live and keep it strive, thrive, <laughs> combine out, peace.